Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple to-do list application. This will be pretty cool for beginners or anyone who's new to Ruby, wants to learn a little bit of Ruby and also some front-end tools. I hope you guys are excited and let's get right into coding. Alright, so let's get started by just going into the terminal. You're also you're going to want to make sure that you have Rails installed. You can check that by typing in rails-v and it should return this Rails version. Well, whatever version you have installed. So as long as you have one newer than Rails 7, you should be able to follow along this video. So now I'm going to generate the app by typing Rails new. I'll just call it to-dos. And then I'm going to set the database to use PostgreSQL. And the Tailwind, I'm going to set the CSS framework to use Tailwind by typing dash C Tailwind. And just like that, I can press enter and it'll start generating our simple Rails app. So it's running all these commands. And this is just gonna set us up like an empty app that we're gonna have to build in the features that we want from there. So we're gonna have a few models, a few controllers, and we can take advantage of some of the Rails helpers like the generators to make this a lot easier to build. Although building Rails apps is already pretty easy with the setup that they have. So just going through, also make sure you have Redis because we're going to be using Redis for action cable streaming with Hotwire. So make sure that you have Redis installed. I know I forgot that on my MacBook video, like the last video that I dropped. Uh, I was just trying to post something to keep the ball rolling. I was having some problems with my streaming setup and it's been really hot here. Anyways, now that the app has finished uh, generating, you can CD into that app and then start the server with bin slash dev. Now that's because we're using Tailwind, so we have to run the Tailwind server as well. So now when the server starts, you'll see that it's listening on port 3000. So to view the app, you can go to localhost Tailwind 3000, and we can load up this app. So now that load, uh, we do have this little error. It says you can't find the database, but there's a button to create database. So just click that button it'll create the database and then boom, you see the Rails logo. This means that your app is set up and you're ready to start coding. So from here, we can add some pages and like the simple model set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate a to-do list model. So in the console, I'm gonna do a scaffold by typing Rails G scaffold to do underscore list. And then a to-do list will probably have just like a name now what scaffold is going to do is going to create the to-do list model and it's also going to create the controllers and the views so that we have a working form just right off the bat which is pretty awesome so i'm going to run this command to generate the to-do list all right now we have a to-do list now what we want to do is open the code up in your favorite code editor so i'm going to open it in vs code that's what i like to use now we're inside of vs code what i'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the config folder and the routes.rb. Inside of here, I want to set the root. So the root is the page that gets shown on the main part of our app. So like logo is 3000. By default, it shows the Rails logo. But once you set a root, it'll show that instead. So inside of config routes.rb, we can just go down here to the bottom. There's already like a comment. So we can just uncomment by deleting the pound sign. And then I also want to update this because we don't have a post controller. We do have a to-do list controller. So I'll just change that to to-do list index action. And then if we go back in the browser, reload. Well, let's make sure that the server started. I keep confusing the terminal. Oops. All right, so I'm going to run bin slash dev in the terminal. Come back into the browser. Give it a reload. Oh, and we also need to migrate the database after that scaffold for the to-do list run the pending migrations and then boom we have this already like this app set up this is what our app looks like now and it's mobile responsive too which is pretty cool so we're going to create our new to-do list let's just say like shopping list how do we do that i'm going to create the shopping list now we have this simple page where we can view the to-do list and you'll see it has the id and the url and we can just view it back here so then on this page is where i'm going to add the to-do items. So that's pretty exciting. 
and I guess we could actually do a scaffold for the to-do items too. I was thinking about doing it by hand, but at this point I'm kind of lazy. So let's go back into the console and we're going to generate the to-do items that will render inside of a to-do list. So to do that, I'm just going to run rel g scaffold to-do item. And then this is going to belong to to-do list. So to set up that association, you say to-do list colon belongs to. Now, what else would a to-do item have? It would probably have like some text or like a description kind of thing. I think we'll just do a string. So let's just say like text. And then I think you're gonna wanna have to like check off the items that are done. So we can add a field called done. Or how about like completed? This is gonna be a Boolean. So Boolean means either true or false. So the different types of data that we have are a relationship to the to-do list, a string for text, and then a boolean for completed. So I'm going to run enter. And then we can go ahead and look at the migration real quick. So it generated this migration, which is going to go into the database. And if you take a look, it's just creating this table to-do items. We have the belongs to, to-do list, we have the string for text, and the boolean. So one thing I like to do is I like to set a default for booleans. Because if you don't, it'll just be like nil. What we can do is go into the code, go to the DB folder and the migrate folder, and then just go to the latest migration. And inside of here, you'll see the migration for the to-do items. And I'm gonna go onto the Boolean uh, line, and I'm gonna set the default to false. So all to-do items are gonna start off being completed false. And then I'm just gonna go into the terminal and I'm gonna run Rails DB migrate. So this is another way to run the migration if you don't want to click the button on the page. Just run Rails DB migrate and it'll run any migrations. Also, if you need to, like if you accidentally forgot something and you want to like change the default or something after you've done a migrate, you can do Rails DB rollback. That undoes the last migration and it allows you to go and edit it. But I'm just going to run migrate again. And that would like put it back so it's kind of cool how you can do that all right so now i'm going to start the server in slash dev and let's go let's reload our to-do list so actually there's not going to be any change but if we go to in the url to do items now you'll see we have this whole like to do items page where we can create a new to do item now the form looks really weird <laughs> There's like to-do lists, so this doesn't really make sense. What we want to do is we want to load up to-do items from the to-do list. Right now, they're totally separate. So there's a little bit of configuration we have to do. We're going to start from the routes. So go into the routes file. Now you'll notice there's two resources, to-do items and to-do lists. Really what we want is we want the to-do items to be nested inside of to-do list. So to do that, we can just copy this to-do items resource and then put it inside of to-do list with a block. So to add a block, you just write do, and then go on a new line, write end, and anything inside of it will be nested inside of to-do list, which means you'll have to pass in the to-do list ID, and then like so on, we'd be able to set the, the list ID inside of the to-do items controller. So just like that, that looks good. Now inside of the app controllers, we're gonna go and edit the to-do items controller so what we can probably do is just do a before action set to do list. And this is going to be a method we define <clears throat> down in the private. So do def set to do list. And then inside of here, we'll say to do underscore list equals to do list dot finds params. <laughs> Wait, to do list to do underscore list ID. So that's where, how we're gonna set the to-do list. And you'll see how this works once we tie it all together, like in the view. But if you wanna see the routes, after we updated the config routes, you can go into the console and type rails routes, and it'll display all of your configured routes. And you can make sure like everything was correct. So what we wanna see is to-do list underscore to-do items. So these are like the paths for each thing. So a new to-do list underscore item. You'll see that the URL is expecting this to-do list ID param. 
and then it has the to do items. So that's what you get when you nest one resource inside of another. It's pretty chill. All right, so now we have the to-do list. What I'm gonna do is inside of here, whenever we're like rendering to-do item, I'm gonna do it off of the to-do list. I think we still have to update the model real quick. So the to-do list model, you'll see it doesn't have any attributes, but the to-do item actually has the belongs to to-do list. So we just have to tie these together by on the to-do list model saying has many to-do items. And if you wanted to also say dependent destroy, this would mean whenever the to-do list is removed, the two items would also get deleted from the database. So we probably want to do that. Now let's go back to the to-do items controller and I'm going to replace all of these to-do item like scopes. So this, if we just get all the to-do items, it would be all of the items for every list. But instead we just want to get the items off of the to-do the to list dot to-do items like this to do list dot to do items i think also if we want to like have an elias so maybe we just want to say to do list dot items instead of to do items that might be like look cleaner we can actually define that in the model so to do list dot rb if we come in here and just say elias items to do items i think that's how you do it i'm not really sure let's let's check in real c I'm going to see them a type to do item dot last or wait, no, to do list dot last do <laughs> this is getting confusing to do. Okay. So it says unexpected comma, shoot, let me look this up. Rails Elias. Oh, that's, that's Ruby. Interesting. First we have Elias, which is a Ruby keyword, like if dev class. What? Really? Print something puts? Oh, I see. So it like puts one method for another name. And it says we have an Elias method. <clears throat> Elias for association rails. That's what I wanted to do. I'd probably just add my own Elias association that did both together and center. I'm so confused. All right, let's try to do that. Elias attribute items to to do items. And that should work. I'm gonna reload. Look at that, to do list dot last. And then if I call dot items, it's basically just gonna do the same thing as saying to do items. See if I also wrote to do underscore items. It gives us the same thing. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that was easy. Now inside of that to do items controller, we're going to use this to do list items for each of these things, like for the new. Boom. Now we're creating a new item for the to do list. Also for create. And then the rest of them should be fine, except for oh set to do item down here. Instead of finding it from all of the items, let's just find it only from the list. So like this to do list dot items dot find for the ID and that should do it. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to have, I want to first like display the items and also the form. So I'm going to take advantage of some hot wire, which will allow us to add like the to do item form onto the to do list page. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's go inside the code and go over to that page that we're looking at the to do items show page. So inside of the app views folder, there's a to do items folder with a bunch of different pages inside of it, like a bunch of different files. The one that we're going to go to is the show. This is where we're showing like the to do item, which right now all this has is a title. So why don't we go underneath here and oh, we don't have any to do items. So Displaying them doesn't really make sense yet. Let's just start off with the form. So I'm going to do a turbo frame. So turbo frame tag. I'm going to call this new to do item. And I'm going to make this load up from the to do. Oh, whoops. I'm in the wrong show page, by the way. Not to do. Item. I keep getting confused because they're so similar to do list show page. Come over here underneath render to do list. 
I'm gonna put this turbo frame tag new to do item and I'm gonna load it up from the to do items new page. So to do that, we can do a source and I'm gonna put the URL, which you can find these URLs with the rails routes commands. Although usually like you learn uh, over time what the URL should be. But if we were to do rails routes, we should see the nested URL in here. So to do list to do items. So I'm going to grab this one new to do list underscore to do item. This and then just add path. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pass in the to do list. And this is going to automatically try to load up this page, the new page, and it's going to look for a matching turbo frame. So that's how this like hot wire feature works. It allows you to to load up different pages very simply with this turbo frame code. So what I'll do is I'll copy this turbo frame, then I'll navigate over to to do items new. And I'm just going to wrap. Honestly, I'll wrap the whole page in the frame. Just like this, add a do and then an end. So that's how you can wrap the content. Just like this. I'm going to reload, see what happens. So it looks like nothing's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and inspect the console. Check the network tab too. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, that was weird. It kind of like moved in my page for a second. Undefined method to do items path. Oh, I see. So actually what's happening is inside of that new page, it's rendering the form for the to do item. But the form, the URL is not correct because it should be nested, but it's going to look just for like this, like a not nested uh, URL in the model. So to fix this, we could either specify the, the URL or we could just pass in like a race syntax. So it means put it in a, put it like square brackets around the to do item. And then we're going to pass to do item dot to do list as the parent. So you're going to have like two things in an array, the list and then the item. And then that'll fix that error with like the URL because it'll use a nested URL instead. And if I reload, now we see undefined method. Oh, just for the back button at the bottom. So we can just delete that back button. I think that's on the new page. Oh, back to to do items. Yeah, like we don't need a back button. So let's just delete that. And boom, this is what our form looks like. So to do list. Oh, another thing is we can probably remove this to do list field that was added by the scaffold. So let's go back to the to do items form. You'll see there's a to do list ID field on the page. Just completely delete that because yeah, you don't want people being able to change the, the list that the items on, at least not like that. Another thing we can do is in the controller, the to do items controller. Let's remove to do list ID from the permitted params. So these are these params are like the attributes you allow the user to change on the model from these forms. So if we don't let them change the ID, it will be a lot more secure. So now it's only the text and then a completed check mark. So what we can do is let's go back to our to do list. Oh, boom. And you'll see that the form is now rendered. So see, it's like text completed create to do item. This is pretty cool. And we can obviously clean this up from here. So if I go to that form or no, if I go to the new page, let's make this text a little bit smaller for the new to do item. So let's do text Excel. And then we can kind of think of like the UI that we want to have. We probably don't even want to show completed because they can check it off after we like render the items. So on that form, why don't we just get rid of completed? from here, so it's only text, reload. And we think about how we want this UI to be. Maybe we don't even want like that title at the top, so we could delete this from the new page. It just looks like this, and inside of the form. Honestly, I don't really like the styling, so let's delete the div too means we could have probably just like done the turbo frame inside and just around the form, but that's okay. Boom, let's reload. Ooh, now this looks kind of cool. 
I like how the, the bottom, like the button kind of went in the line of the rest of these, interestingly enough. I don't know how it did it. But like, let's see what happens when we do the text, like, we should change that label from text to like add an item or something. So inside the form, the to do items form, down here at form text field, for the label, I'm gonna add a second param. So like, I'm gonna add a comma, and then some strings and inside of here I can say like add a to do item. So now the text will say that instead, add a to do item. And maybe I'll do an emoji. Like for fun. So we can do the plus emoji. Add a to do item. Or add a new item. And then we can style this too by adding a class. I can make the text like a little bit bigger. Oh yeah, that looks cool. So like add a new item. Oh yeah, this is my shopping list, right? So actually let's style this. Let's make like this title big and we don't need this name thing like there either. So to change that, we're gonna go back to the to-do list folder on the show page. And I think it's on the render to-do list. So that means there's this partial underscore to-do list. I'm just gonna delete the name. I'm gonna style this a little bit more like text2xl. Also, we don't even need a partial. Yeah, screw the partial. Let's go back to the to-do list. I'm just gonna delete the render because that's not really doing much. And I'll just put an h1 where I'll put the to-do list at name and I'm gonna need to do it with the instance variable with the at sign. And on the h1, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. There we go, so this is our shopping list. Add a new item. It's, uh, and then you click create to do item to do it. Oh, so what's happening is inside of the redirect, it's trying to bring it to the to do item path, but there is no URL because now it's nested. So everything has to be off of the to do list. So to fix that, let's go to the to do items controller inside of the create instead of redirecting to the to do item let's redirect just simply to the to do list so let's go back all right but we should have created that to do item so let's start listing them on the page so to do that we can go back to the to do list show page so right where we had like the h1 the turbo frame so the turbo frame is just for the form. So I'll do it right on top of there. Let's loop through to do list items, either that or to do items. And then we're gonna do dot each item. Now inside of here, we could do a partial, probably eventually wanna do a partial, but for right now I can just style it right here. You can do like a div, P2 rounded large, PG gray 200. Which just means like a little div with a light background that's kind of set it's kind of like a little bit darker than just white so it'll stick off the page and then we can render the item dot text let's go ahead and reload and boom just like that you'll see we have our item right here like pizza let's do pasta so i press create oh one thing is the form like disappears so i want to see what's what happened with that because we redirect to the to-do list, it should have kept the form. Interesting. So we do have like an empty frame right here now. Show page to-do list. What I was expecting is it should load up. Oh, but maybe, so I guess because we're using source, it wouldn't reload like this. It wouldn't, it wouldn't render this frame again. So hmm. maybe instead of using source, then we can just do a do. Actually, that's kind of interesting because if I want to get the form back here, how do I do it? Well, honestly, also I want to update the, like the items. Cause right now the items aren't getting added. When I do it, 
So why don't we just use turbo streams for both? I'm cool with that. So we're just gonna turbo stream for both things. So what that means is inside of the controller, the to do items controller, right here in the create action, instead of doing any of this, like redirect the to do list, render JSON, honestly, I'm just gonna delete both of these. Instead, I'm gonna do a format dot turbo stream. And then we can just leave this to an empty brackets like this. And we're gonna create a turbo stream template. So to do that, go over to the views and then go to to do items and then press new file. And we're gonna create, create we're gonna create a file called create.turbostream.erb. So this matches the name of the method on the controller. So the create method is going to render a create turbo stream. And inside of here we can do a turbo stream like anything we want. So we can update parts of the page, we can remove items from the page, we can append items. So that's what we're doing for the list. So back on the to-do list show page, we actually should put this inside of a partial, like the item itself. So let's render to-do item. This is gonna be a partial inside of to-do list. So I'm going to create a new file in to-do list folder called underscore to-do item.html.erb. I'll plop this code, just like the simple to-do item code. And then back on the show page, we're going to render to-do item and we have to pass in the item as a variable. So item is equal to item. Now we can use item inside of that partial. Then on our turbo stream template, we can do turbo stream uh, append and we can add the item onto the page. But first we need to have a div that we can target. So something with an ID. So I'm gonna do a div ID equals to do dash items. And I'll wrap these items that we're rendering in this div. Now we can target here inside of the create turbo stream. Let's do append to do items. Then we can set partial to to do underscore lists slash to do item. And then pass in locals. Item is going to be at to do item. So we should have defined to do item inside of the controller. If we come back here, yet yeah, we have to do item defined, which means we can use it inside of this turbo stream. So now our turbo stream should be adding new to do items to the page. So let's take a look. When we go here, when we add our item, it should just automatically pop up. So let's say I need to get tomatoes. Boom, you saw it automatically popped up. It didn't reload or anything. But one thing is the form didn't reload. So that's another tricky thing. Onions, create to do item, but you'll see like the form didn't reset. So what we probably want to do is just replace the form with a new form. So to do that, all right, so our new items are getting added to the list, broadcasted, or not even broadcasted, just turbo streamed from that action. Now I want to look inside of here and check out the flow of things. So we have this turbo frame new to do item which is loading up the new page so if we come inside of here what does the new page have well that's the to-do list the to-do the to-do items new page literally only renders form just like this so you know what this makes it really easy to update because all we have to do is target this id the new to do item and pass in this form so basically we can just copy most of this and then go back to that create turbo stream file on a new line. I'll pop it in and I'm just going to update this to like turbo stream dot. Um, there's a few different actions. I think update means you replace the entire content of a div. So we're going to do turbo stream for this new to do item. Then I'm going to pass in partial form and then the locals which actually just or wait no it's to do item 
because that's what we're using in this form. Right, so now our Turbo Stream template looks like this. We're adding to the items and we're also updating the form with a new form. So like a fresh form. So that should actually do it. Let's try to add a new item. Let's say we need like garlic. So actually it didn't update the form. At least I don't think so. Let's see what happened there. Or possibly what's happening is we're passing in the item, so then it sets the form. That's funny. So actually, ins instead of setting the item, we're going to pass in to do list .items new. So we have a fresh item instead of using like the the existing item that already has the attributes and everything. I guess that's what happened. So I'm going to add a new item, soda, and boom, just like that. It adds it to the list and it also clears the form, so we get a fresh form. So from here, I want to do some more styling on the list, like space these things out, make the text bigger, and then add the completed so like you can check off things from the list. So we already have that completed field, but now we want to add like a checkbox that just automatically updates the page. So to get started on this, let's go to the to-do list show page. And let's take a look at what's happening. So we're rendering that to-do item. So that's the file that we're going to want to update right now inside of to-do item. Let's go ahead and make text larger. Do like two text to Excel. It'll be pretty big. Maybe we only don't want Excel. Actually on the to-do list show page on the div, we can add some styling too. Like let's do class grid gap four. So this will add some space between each item. Let's do the piece to the pasta tomatoes, like all this stuff. It's getting like pretty Italian, but I love it. And we can also add some padding on the top, some margin top to push down from like the list name. And simply we might just add like that completed checkbox. So to do that, instead of to do item, let's just add a checkbox tag. And you're gonna wanna put the name of like what it is. So I'll just call it completed. And then I don't really remember the rest of the stuff for a checkbox tag, so I'm gonna quickly look it up. You'll find, if you just look up the name of one of these tags, you'll find it online and it'll tell you how you can use it. So like you can put the first thing, I guess, is the name. The second is the value, which defaults to one. So I guess all we really need is the first attribute and then if we want to style it later on. Let's reload. Boom, just like that, we have a checkbox that you can click. Now, what I want to do is I want to shove it all the way to the end. So I'm going to need some styling right away. So we can add class ML auto. Reload. See, nothing happens because I think it's trying to use this as the second parameter. So we actually have to like add in some more things like true might be the value or they use one usually. So I want to just do true and then what's the next thing is checked, which is default to false. So for us, checked would be go to item completed. So whether that's true or false will determine if it's checked or not. Okay, now I'm still not seeing the styling, so maybe that wasn't the issue. So we do have the class ML auto, but it's not really doing what I want. Oh, maybe let's wrap the text in the span. Let's reload. No, still same thing. So what I'll do is on this top level div, let's add flex and then justify between, which will push both elements on either sides of the box. Now you'll see that this is fine, but the checkbox is a little bit like there's a little bit more space on the bottom. So to fix that, we can do an item center to center those elements. So now it's like perfectly centered, but it still looks a little bit weird. I think I want to make it bigger. So let's get our MO auto. Let's do like a width 16. Oh, sure. Look at that. No, that looks crazy. Okay, maybe like a width 10, height 10. 
Oh yeah, no, that's big and yeah, I like that actually. We can add rounded also if we want to make it like a rounded checkbox, which can be kind of fun. So you can do rounded large or you can do rounded full, have a full circle, which will look pretty cool. Oh yeah, I like that. Another thing is you can change the color of all of that. So I really forget, how do you change, isn't it fill? Fill pink 500, possibly fill. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. Change checkbox color tailwind. Oh, it's called accent color. Ah. So if we set like accent pink 500. <laughs> it didn't do anything. Is it really accent? I've never seen that. Oh. I guess we need to set the focus, possibly. Focus, accents, pink 500, let's see. Wait, I mean, nah, it's not working. Interesting. Also, sometimes you have to add like a certain thing. Well, in my Tailwind config, it says it's using Tailwind forms. I'm not sure why it's not letting me override that. Weird. Accent purple 500. It says that should change the color, but for some reason it's not. All right, let's worry about that later. Also, I kind of want to worry about it now. Like accent, color, not working, tailwind. This is how I figure out how to up or how to make things work. The accent color sets the actual accent color. However, when you're using the plugin, we remove the default appearance and replace it with a style level checkbox. Oh, if you want to use the same, then you can use text color classes inside instead. Oh yeah, I just realized that. This does not look default because there's actually like a check icon. That is not default, right? Or maybe it is. Anyways, it looks pretty good. So I guess they say you use like text color and background, right? So BG purple 500 would set the background color. Wait, but that's like always the background color. Hmm. Maybe if it's like checked, BG purple, maybe that's how you do it. Nope. So weird. How about text purple 500? How would that do it? Oh, hey, okay. I guess that's what it is. Let's do text uh, indigo 300. All right, that's nice. So we can actually like design this full page a little bit more pretty if we wanted to. Let's start off with a background color. So to do that, let's go to the layouts application file. And I'm gonna set a background color on the body. Let's just do like a BG Indigo 200. Ooh, now we have a nice pretty like baby blue. And check off our items on the list. Uh, we can also like style those list items a little bit more. So instead of BG gray, maybe we'll do like BG indigo 400. Although that's gonna be a lot of purple. Hmm. Okay, I'm cool with gray actually. <laughs> Oops, let's go back to gray. And then I think like it would be cool if once you check it, the whole color of the item like turns to a different color. Oh, we're not even saving this right now, so we need to fix that. We need to make the checkbox somehow update this particular item and set it to completed. Which, that's pretty easy with Rails. We might just need to use a little bit of stimulus. So like a stimulus controller for a checkbox. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to want to generate a new stimulus controller in the console. So we can do that by typing Rails G stimulus. Let's just call it checkbox. 
Okay. And then on side of on our checkbox tag, I'm gonna add a data. Let me bring this to a new line. So add data controller. Set that to the checkbox controller. Then we're gonna set also action. It can be like the change action. So whenever the checkbox is changed, we're gonna trigger a checkbox update. We're also gonna to wanna to like post to a URL in our backend. We can pass in that URL through a checkbox URL value. And then we're gonna need some sort of URL for this. So right now we just have like this, the basic routes, our config routes. We have like this resource to do list, resource to do items. We do have an update route, so we might wanna use that. To do item. We go to like the to do items controller we have this whole update action right here which we could definitely use so we might just want to do that for now so many pages open it's kind of like funny okay let's pass it in checkbox url value is going to be set to so the url would actually be do list underscore to do item and you pass in both of them another way to do that though is to just use the array ray syntax pass in item dot to do list also item and i think we need to pass that into url for and it should generate a url for the nested resource let's see if i'm right let's reload no errors so i think i am right i think i got it we inspect, you'll see that the data checkbox URL value is actually going to that correct uh, URL. It's pretty sick. So now we just need the stimulus to hook up and set this all together. So to edit that JavaScript, we can go to app JavaScript controllers and we'll see our checkbox controller that we created. Inside of the checkbox controller, we have this connect action. So whenever it gets connected to the page, you can do something. I'm just going to change that to, I think we called it update. Yeah, we, we called it update. That's the action that we're expecting. And we just console log updating checkbox. Also, let's pass in the, the E to the event. We could say let checkbox equals e.target let checked equals checkbox.checked so we can check if it's checked or not and let's also console log that let's reload and i'm gonna take a look at what we're getting in the console and when we click it says updating the checkbox and it says that the checked is true so what we'll do is now we have to post to that url send a request to the server to update the checkbox so to do that I usually use the, ra the rails slash request JS library because it just makes it really simple to do post requests and well, all types of web requests. So if you look up rails request JS, you'll find the GitHub and it has some documentation on setting it up. So it handles like the CSRF token and everything. So you can do the gem, but we're using import maps. So we might as well just actually add this make sure you've already installed import maps rails hmm. this is interesting do you really have to add the gem or you can use an import map but i guess it's probably better to just do the gem so let's add this request js rails into the gem file and they say to do it underneath import maps rails. I don't really know how that's important, but let's do that. We'll go in the console, run a bundle. And then there was a command rails request JS install. I've never ran that before in my life. That's funny. All right, so it's installing it. Now let's run their commands. Rails request JS install. A little cold but good all right so it looks like it imported request.js it somehow like set that all up for us that's kind of cool 
the last command it says add this import rails request js to the application js oh interesting so i think it already did that for us if we go over to javascript application js you'll see we have rails request js importing so it's already done now what we're going to do is inside of our checkbox controller up at the top we're going to import the function that we want to use so we're going to do post or actually because we're using the update route we're going to use put or patch so i'm going to import put from quest.js and then we can use this inside of this action now because all of these actions from request.js are async you need to add the async tag to the function so on our update function i'm going to write async before it then do a little space now we can use it inside because we're going to have to wait so we'd say const response equals await put and we're going to use the url value which we also need to define this up at the top we need to set our static values we have a url which is type string so this is what you have to use to pass in like the values from the dom from the html so we're going to take our url value just like this then i'm going to pass in some more parameters i'm going to do a comma brackets and then we're going to set the body so that's like this is like the body that you would post to the server and then they would use for updating like the different things so inside of the body we would have just like completed and we set that to checked which we're getting up here from the checks and really that's it we actually don't even need the response but we do need the await so we're gonna do this we're just gonna wait for it uh, but we're not really using the response at all so that doesn't matter this is just what our code would look like now if we go ahead and reload this should already be working although oh we're getting an error in console fail to resolve module specifier request js oh shoot is that coming from application js or what i think it's coming from over here oh but also in the checkbox controller that's annoying so i think that gem is not working how it expects let's go into config import map to rb look there's not even anything for the import for the request js no way see this is wrong um i'm just gonna run this command in the console real quick dot slash bin import map in rails slash request js this is how i always get it and it works fine now we shouldn't have any problems we don't even need to import it inside of the application js so yeah i shouldn't have used the gem let's delete that import reload all right now we don't have any issues and when we click you'll see it actually tried to make a put request to the server but for some reason we got a 500. oh look it looks like it updated the to-do items too completed equals something so it set completed true oh that's sick but then it's saying like an undefined method to do item url so that's because after it updates in that controller so let's go and look at the code let's go to controllers to do items controller so if it was able to update with the params which for some reason it is working How is it, <laughs> wait, the funny thing is, how is it getting the completed true inside of the to-do item? I have no idea. Cause we're just passing body completed true, but for some reason it's like actually putting it in their correct place. That's kind of crazy. Okay, I guess that's fine. But anyways, inside of the do items controller, uh, wait, in the update, so we're trying to render like the HTML, the JSON, whatever. Let's just delete that. 
And let's also do it format.turboStream. So now it wouldn't even return anything except for the turbo stream. I'm going to do a matching template. So back in the views to do items, I'm going to create a new file, call it update.turbostream.erb. And then we can do whatever we want here. So I think what we'd actually want to do is target this to do item back over here. So we have that inside of to do list. We have this partial for to do item where we have like the checkbox, the text and everything. Why don't we use an ID on the to do item? So I'll put an ID and then I'm going to use DOM ID and I'll pass in the item just like this. And it should take care of everything we need for the ID. Now it'll allow us to target that. So inside of the update turbo stream, do a turbo stream dot replace and target DOM ID for the item. So we'll have that to do item variable. We're going to replace it with a partial, which would be the same partial to do underscore list slash to do underscore item. And we'll have a locals. We'll pass in item to do underscore item, just like this. So now we'd be updating that partial. Now, the cool thing is we're going to get to styling the element based on if it's checked or not. So we can just do that right where we have the BG gray. Let's add some Ruby code and we'll say item dot completed completed question mark early to a space question mark. So if it's completed, we're going to do a certain code. Otherwise, we're going to do this. So this is what they call a ternary operator in Ruby. It's pretty helpful to do like simple one liners like this. So you put the method which should return true or false for us it's item.completed then you do space question mark and then you have two options so the first is if it's true the second is if it's false and then you have a colon in the middle to separate them and make sure that there's space in between each of these it's kind of tricky but it's not too bad so inside of if it is completed let's do like bg green 500 so it's just going to turn green now let's reload. Boom, look at that, that one's green. Now let's say we uncheck it. That should have posted to the server. Oh, we got a not acceptable. Okay. Unknown format. Ah, so actually, this is a funny thing with request.js is by default, it's gonna try to render HTML or JSON. But what we want it to do instead is return a turbo stream. So we have to actually update the JavaScript. So back to checkbox controller, inside of these params next to body, so outside of body, but still in the main like options, we're gonna set the response kind to turbo dash stream, just like that. And you're good to go after here. So we can check our item and boom, just like that, you see the UI updates and it's pretty clean. But one thing I'm noticing right now is look, when I check an item, the focus automatically goes to like the top one. Now I'm guessing that's because they have the same ID on the label. So I want to quickly fix that. So inside of here to do item, let's change the ID for this. So you can just set the ID. It can be like another DOM ID, but make sure that it's different. So you can pass item, but then you also have to pass like a sub name. So we're going to say checkbox. If you don't, if you have the same DOM ID as up here, it would actually like break some of the styling because it would be updating either one of these. So make sure that you have like a secondary option. So I did DOM ID item, then a comma, and this checkbox as a symbol, which will update the name to be like slightly different. But now all of our, see each of these things had its own ID for the checkbox, so it wouldn't mess up the UI like you were seeing. All right, this is pretty sweet. Another thing I might want to have is when it's checked, it could be like a green too. Let's do like text green 600. Why not? See, uncheck. Oh, that's so cool. This is pretty fun. You can even use tab and enter. Maybe not enter. We should set that up though. And then down at the bottom, of course, we want to add a new item like 
beans, greens, salad, chopped, I don't even know, cucumbers. Now we have all of these different items we can check off the list. And then of course, if we wanna go back and create a new list, we can also do that. So like, if it's not a shopping list anymore, but like goals for the day, create to-do list, make a video. Now I'm making a video right now, code something cool, check that off the list, use Ruby on Rails, hot wire, Check that off the list. <laughs> These are all the things that you can do if you watch this video and follow along. That's pretty cool. Check off the list, just like this. Another thing that we might wanna have is like some sort of progress bar up at the top, or like even a counter that shows how many are done versus how many aren't done. So to do that on the to-do list show page, it's pretty easy. Let's just put it next to the name. So what I'll do is I'll actually wrap this in a div. I'm going to use flex justify between so that we can space out like the counter and the name on both sides of the page, but they'll be even. Now what I'll do is I'll just render like counter, that'll be a new partial, and then we'll pass in to do underscore list, just add to do list. Now I'm going to create that partial inside of to do list, underscore counter by HTML B. or B. Now inside of the counter, we can just have like a div the class of flex, maybe gap two. Then we'll have a span. The first span will be how many are currently done. So to find that, we go off the to-do list dot items where completed true, and then dot count. Then I'll do another span and I'll just do a slash. Then I'll do another span. Inside of here, I'll put the total amount of items, which is pretty much easier. You just do to do list.items. Size. You can do size or you can do count, but size doesn't use a query. It's like less intensive on the database. Now, if we were to reload, we'll see we have this nice counter at the top. When we click, now we would want to update that to like 103. And we can do that so simply by taking advantage of the Turbo Stream, which we already have. So let's just add an ID onto this div, ID equals counter. Now let's go over to the update turbo stream and let's do turbo stream dot replace counter with partial to do underscore list counter locals pass in the to do list just like that, and then make sure to end off the Ruby code. Boom, and now we'll take a look at what this looks like. So we click, and boom, it actually updates that number right there. So now we have three out of three, zero out of three. This is pretty sick. Now another thing is where we add the new item, like what else do I wanna get from the store? Like some pesto. Uh, we also want it to update the number. So to do that, all we have to do is copy the same code for replacing counter and put it inside of the create turbo stream next to the rest of our turbo streams so that's what i love about hotwire is it's just that easy to like make these page updates now if i was to say like bread oh wait i forgot it was the wrong <laughs> i'm putting my to-do items on my goals for the day that's how you know you're getting too hungry although funnily enough look it's it actually did the wrong number it says six when we really only have five and the reason being is on that create turbo stream, right before we're rendering it, we're doing a dot new. So we actually want to do like a to-do list dot reload so that it gets rid of that last one. Yeah, see, and now it goes back to normal. Talkies, boom, now we get to correct them out. We can update it, everything's working well. So right now we have six out of six, but then I add like pizza rolls. And now we have six out of seven. I have another goal for the day. Although these aren't really like my goals. So it would also be cool if I could delete one of these, like maybe right click. I could right click and then just says like remove from list. Cause you can actually make your own pop-up dialogue. Just like how you have the basic dialogue from Chrome. You can override that and make your own. 
I did that before in another app. But I think this is pretty good for like a starter tutorial. We might even want to display stuff on this main to-do list page. Because right now it just has like this really kind of ugly UI. But we do have our lists and we have like this little bit of functionality. Let's say like cool apps to build. Airbnb. Already did that. Instagram. Reddit. YouTube. Like we literally already did this. So what other apps? Maybe like Uber. We already did that. DoorDash. We didn't do DoorDash. Twitter. We actually did do Twitter. Some guy was saying Netflix. I already did Netflix, but I want to do it again. So like Netflix part two. And you'll notice like all of these things get saved when you reload. Everything's working just as you expect. We uncheck, we reload. Although it's weird, it, like the ordering kind of switches around all the time. Oh, because I think it's ordering based on like the last one that was updated or something like that. This is pretty sick. I'm really happy with this app and I'm happy that I was able to record this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, like the video for more, and then comment down below what you'd like me to see me build in future videos. I'm really excited to build more content and to do like everything that you guys want to see. I want to work with Stripe. I want to work with alternative payment platforms. Like some guy told me that because apparently Stripe doesn't work in his country. And that sucks. I'm sorry, bro. I want you to accept payments and I don't care about, you know, Stripe or anything like that. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys soon. See you around.